The Rise of Tata Tata Group Tata is India's biggest and most diversified business conglomerate with more than 100 operating companies spread across 85 countries in six different continents, employing 350,000 people and generating revenue of 107.8 billion US dollars as of the 2018 financial year. So, who created this massive conglomerate? It all began over 150 years ago when India was still under the brutal and depressive British occupation. Indian textile industry has been considered one of the finest textile industries in the world since ancient times. The Romans did business with India and apparently gave equal number of gold coins to Indians in exchange with the weight of Indian textiles. Imposition of taxes, banning of Indian textiles in other markets, and physical abuse of Indian weavers by the British caused the death of Indian small-scale textile industries. The entire economy of India under the British Raj started dwindling from 32% in the 1850s to nearly 2% in 1947 when India got her independence. Out of all the mayhem, a man named Jamsetji Tata emerged, determined to establish his business. Jamsetji's entrepreneurial career began, in the words of J.R.D. Tata, when the colonial rule was at its peak. The Indian mutiny of 1857 was but two years past when Jamsetji joined the small firm that his father, a merchant and banker, ran. He had just turned 20 years old. Jamsetji Tata laid the foundations of the Tata Group when he started a private trading firm in 1868. In 1874, he set up the Central India Spinning, Weaving and Manufacturing Company Limited and thus marked the group's entry into textiles. From about 1880 to his death in 1904, Jamsetji was consumed by what has to be the three great ideas of his life. Setting up an iron and steel company, generating hydroelectric power, and creating a world-class educational institution that would tutor Indians in the sciences. None of these would materialize while Jamsetji lived, but the seeds he laid, the work he did, and the force of will he displayed in fulfilling his triumvirate of dreams ensured they would find glorious expression. Of the ventures that did bear fruit while Jamsetji was alive, the Taj Mahal Hotel in Bombay has to rank highest. Legend has it that Jamsetji set his mind on building it after being denied entry into one of the city's hotels for being an Indian. His sons, friends, and business associates were skeptical. His sisters chided him by asking, are you really going to build a luxurious hotel? The Taj Mahal turned out to be a bit fancier than that. In 1902, the Indian Hotels Company was incorporated to set up the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower, India's first luxury hotel, which opened in 1903. Soaked in luxury, it was the first building in Bombay in 1903 to use electricity, and the first hotel in the country to have American fans, German elevators, Turkish baths, English butlers, and a whole lot of other innovative delights. Tata Group's name is synonymous with India's industrialization. The group gave India her first steel plant, hydroelectric plant, inorganic chemistry plant, and created a reservoir of scientific and technological manpower for the country. J.R.D. Tata takes over as the group's chairman after his father passes away in 1904. Through his endeavors in setting up Tata Steel and Tata Power, this elder son of Jamsetti Tata was instrumental in transforming his father's grand vision into reality. J.R.D. Tata, chairman of the Tata Group, pioneered civil aviation on the subcontinent in 1932 by launching the airline now known as Air India. That was the first of many path-breaking achievements that J.R.D., who guided the destiny of the group for more than half a century, came to be remembered for. After India's independence in 1947, then Prime Minister of India, Nehru, who was a socialist, saw what the Tatas have achieved and decided to nationalize the airline. 
J.R.D. Tata was deeply distressed by the decision of the government to nationalize the aviation business. Nehru invited Tata to chair the global airline, and he agreed. Tata continued as chairman of Air India till 1978, when his services were unceremoniously terminated by then Prime Minister of India, Desai. In 1968, Tata Consultancy Services, known as TCS, India's first software services company, was established as a division of Tata Sons. The group then goes on to create several such divisions like Tata McGraw-Hill Publishing Company in 1970 and Titan Industries to manufacture watches in 1984. Tata continued to expand under the leadership of Ratan Tata, who took over the Tata Group in 1971. Ratan Tata, who was the great-grandson of Jamsetji Tata, was pivotal in making India's indigenously designed and manufactured car, called Tata Indica, which was launched by Tata Motors in 1998. But it faced stiff competition from Maruti, another indigenous car company which was backed by the Gandhi family since 1970s. Back in 1999, Tata Motors was still a toddler in the passenger vehicle business, with the new and indigenously developed car Indica receiving lukewarm response from the masses. The poor response to its maiden offering drove the company to sell its passenger vehicle division with Ford showing interest in a buyout. A meeting was then set up at the American automaker's headquarters in Detroit, where Ratan Tata and his team met with some nasty remarks by the American firm. Remarks like, you do not know anything. Why did you start the passenger car division at all? Along with, we will be doing a favor by purchasing your car division. Didn't go down well with Mr. Tata, who eventually chose to not sell the car division away. This meeting did come to a full circle nine years later in 2008, when Ford was on the verge of bankruptcy, owed to the financial meltdown, and it was Tata Motors that eventually won the bid, acquiring the Jaguar Land Rover brands for $2.3 billion from the American automaker. Ford is selling its Jaguar and Land Rover businesses to India's Tata Motors. A $2.3 billion deal, less than half the price that struggling Ford paid for the two luxury brands, had been in the works for months. Ford bought Jaguar for $2.5 billion in 1989 and Land Rover for $2.7 billion in 2000. But it's been struggling financially and wants to focus on its main brands and pay for its turnaround plan. The buyout was also a saving grace for Ford. Chairman Mr. Bill Ford thanked Mr. Tata, saying, You are doing us a big favor by buying JLR. A classic story of the little guy getting back at the giant, it was indeed Tata's perseverance and hard work that paid off in the success of the Indica in its later years, followed by other products as well. Today, Jaguar Land Rover has been doing exceptionally well globally and is the mainstay of Tata Motors' finances. Tata was on the offensive since the 1999 buyout was called off by Rotan Tata. It went on a buying spree in the foreign markets to effectively counter competition in global markets. In 2000, Tata T acquired the Tetley Group, the largest beverage company in the United Kingdom. This was the first major acquisition of an international brand by an Indian business group. In 2001, Tata entered into an insurance business joint venture with Tata AIG. In 2007, Tata Steel acquired Chorus, the fifth largest steel company in the world. Ratan Tata made sure that the group which controlled over 130 companies, both domestic and abroad, was organized and kept under Tata Sons for effective control. The group's global business operations are spread over seven business sectors, such as communications and information technology, engineering, materials, services, energy, consumer products, and chemicals. He made sure that each Tata company operated independently under the guidance and supervision of its own board of directors and shareholders, so as to effectively counter competition from other competitors. There are 29 publicly listed Tata enterprises with a combined market cap of about $151.62 billion as of March 1, 2018. Today, Tata is India's largest and most diversified business conglomerate, with more than 100 operating companies spread across 85 countries in six different continents, employing 350,000 people and generating revenue of 107.8 billion US dollars as of the 2018 financial year. So, we will leave it right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.